foot in the human back into technology with Gethin Ellis and Mark Williams. Welcome to the 10th episode of the Fit Podcast. Here at GethinEllis.com, whilst we know physical fitness is essential, our mental health is vital too, and our Fit, fit Podcast is all about putting the human back into technology. One thing we can probably all agree on is the last year or so has been unprecedented, so we wanted to seek out the views of technology leaders, business owners, consultants, and many others from a range of different businesses and operations and organizations to discuss with them the impacts on their business, on their people, uh, and on their technology to see how they see the future unfolding. So without further ado, I'll introduce you to episode 10, where we speak to John Stenton. Hey, welcome to part two of uh, Putting the Human into Technology. This is this is episode 10, where we are talking to John Stenton, who is head of IT for Thrive Homes. Now, uh, we ended part one. Um, John was giving us the best piece of advice that he's ever, ever received, and, and, and it was basically communicate as much as you can. All right. Now, with all that said, I'm going to jump straight into the first question in part two. And uh, we, we were alluded to this a little bit in part one, John, but around the sort of digital transformation and delivering change. And it, from part one, it was clear you've done quite a lot of that since you've been at Thrive Homes. Um, but, but with that in mind, do you think most organisations need to transform or is it more about continual improvement? And then whichever one you pick, why? Uh, it depends on the business. If you're a one-man band, I don't know, fixing fences, how much digital do you need? As long as people can call you. Yeah. But if you're if you're trying to sell products over the internet, you absolutely 100% need to be digital. But it depends on the circumstances. It really does on what what you what products you're selling and how you're selling it. Uh, just going back to the the, the one man band painting fences. Even those though, they're very reliant on social media and word of mouth because that that spreads. And and I know where I live in Wolverhampton. There's I call it the nosy neighbour group, and I'll probably get told off for calling it. <laughs> but if if, if 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 a tradesman gets into that group and it gets recommended, I know they get a lot more work from it. And yes. you know they are painting walls and painting fences and mowing lawns and all that type of stuff. Yeah, so they definitely need to be involved in social media. But does is that would you call that digital transformation or continual improvement? Uh, well, that's a question for you. But uh, I would call that potentially digital transformation. See, I'd call it continual improvement, which is oh, why we're asking the question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Gethin and I are on. That's uh, just moving with the time slightly. You're not changing the infrastructure or or, or changing your business model. I I, I have I, this is a question for. This is question is born about because I have, I have a bit of a, a bee in my bonnet about this, John. I have to say that you know, and I alluded to it right at the top of the, the top of the meeting with you know, we've got to do digital transformation. Okay, what do you want to do? You know, the, the clues, the clues, and the clues in the word for me. If you're transforming something, so I think you know, take take a you know, an RSL, a housing association, you know, like 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 yourselves. I don't know whether you're a um, what, what what type you are, but let's you know a broad, broadly a housing association. You're there for a reason. You've got a purpose, and yes. that purpose is to is to provide you know something along the lines of providing good standard quality of accommodation. You know that people can uh, that the people can rent uh, you know from you and, and get a subsidy from it and so on and so forth. I know I don't know I don't know whether you get involved in other things like you know care in the community and all those kind of things, etc. But but all that is is just adding more purposes to 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 you know to the to the breadth of the organisation. So you know, when, when I when I do quite a lot of work as does Gethin in, in the, broadly in this not for profit sector, and it's actually it's actually much easier, believe it or not, in the not for profit sector to say, well, hang on a minute, you're a you're a um, you're a housing association, so your purpose is to provide houses, you know, for people. So when you when you say you want to transform, are, are you telling me you want to transform your purpose, or? The way that you're going about doing that oh no 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 we're not we're no we're just you know which all we want to do really is be on you know is 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 i don't know um have a have a, have a bit more intelligence about maintenance or something like that you know in in you know in in, in the supply chain and i'll go okay and i say oh fine what we'll, we'll call that digital transformation because that's what pays my bills right but we'll call that digital transformation but in reality what we're talking about is you just need to move your model on a bit, your your delivery model on a bit of how you're uh, yes. how you're doing things. And I call that transformation is very much a buzzword in my opinion. It's just about change and continual. You know, the question: All right, uh, is it transforming? Or is it continual improvement? Well, technically, they're both the same thing, aren't they? Because in in making your continual improvement, you're trans transforming to do your your famous double quotes, Mark. All right, <laughs> but all that is is you're changing something a little bit. So going back to the first example. <laughs> You're now getting your customers from Facebook instead of your phone ringing all the time. You might be on Messenger instead. But it, and it is only a small shift. 
But most of these are small shifts. There's not many organizations that go boom, oh, we're now a technology company, unless they're like a startup like Netflix, where they were built on it. And Netflix have been around for 15 years. They're not new, but they, they, they've pushed other business, businesses who didn't adopt their model or didn't change as, as they were changing that particular sector. Um, they, they, they've pushed those out of business. But there's no organization that's gone bang, right? We're now digital. I don't think. I don't think there's, I don't think there's, a, there's an example of one of those out there that I can think of anyway. I think, I think for me, transform means big bang, one project. After it, we will have finished. Continue improvement just doesn't stop. Yeah. And it sounds to me, that John, that your uh, philosophy is you know, just thinking about the, the concrete floor that we were talking about uh, earlier on. Um, your, your philosophy is to, is to keep doing things. So you're yes. constantly looking for that um, next bright idea or, or um, the, actually, you know, that didn't work quite as well as, you know, as I would have liked it to work. So I need to, 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 I need to go back. And hopefully you've put enough of the concrete floor in that you don't need to rip it up. You know, <laughs> yes. that, that, ho hopefully it's just, OK, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put a different carpet on top of that concrete floor. or Absolutely or, or agree. Whatever. And that's where the move to dynamics will help. Yeah. Because that then helps the continual improvement. So if someone on the on on the floor wants to change uh, the the ASB process from four steps to three steps, Dynamics will allow us to configure that change. Whereas if we were with the traditional housing association software, we might have to get get someone in for ten days to make a software change. Well, I mean, we're not going to. Uh, we would love to talk to you about dynamics because this is what we do, but that's not the purpose of the. Uh, no, not, I'm just the just, the podcast, just showing but... the, the difference between transformation and continual uh, improvement. I mean, it's a fantastic platform, Dynamics. I mean, you know, I mean, there's not, there are other good platforms out there as well. You know, Salesforce, just to, just to keep the balance right on, you know, on, 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 as far as the, the, the podcast is is concerned. Um, but I suspect you're going to you agree with this. Um, you know, the, the the platform itself is fantastic. It's so broad, and you can choose whether you want to do it yourself at one end of the spectrum, or whether you want to buy it in from somebody else, or get a hybrid, you know, somewhere in the middle. And that, that's what's great about the platform. Um, but it's it's what you do with it. And it's yes. the ideas that you have that you know that that come you come up with that and and uh, clearly it's you know you can do it a bit quicker and a bit easier and maybe a little bit less expensively and so on in in, in the platform that's why people want to do it and that 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 to a degree could be moving into some kind of transformational area because maybe you're able to do things a little bit quicker and a little bit you know a little bit more uh, cost effectively than than perhaps you would have been able to do them you know four or five years ago but there we go. Um, go on, you ask the next question, mate. It's, it's, well, technically, it's your turn, but I'll just I'll just pick up part two then. Um, so, 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 John, we've probably alluded to this a little bit as well. Lots of organisations these days, as part of their digital transformation and continual improvement, right? They want to drive value from their data and tech, right? They want to add capabilities, and you yep. mentioned IT getting treated as a cost centre and, and a service provider. But lots of organisations these days, they are trying to change where they use the technology to to, to, to deliver capability. So, how do you think? The technology and people solutions should be weighted and balanced. How, where, where does that come in for you? What, what sort of, I guess, ratio would you want there? Um, do you drive? You know, how are you going? You've mentioned dynamics, and there's lots of AI and lots of machine learning stuff that you can bolt onto that to get lots of insights from your data. So I'm assuming you're doing it. And then, yeah, like, how, how, how does that fit into into yeah. delivery value for the for the organisation? You, you're actually getting into two of my pet subjects. So if I if I ramble on too much, just let me. That's know. okay. Okay. Technology and people in the business, the business should drive the tech. Good Absolutely 100%. But the business doesn't know what tech to drive if you aren't vocal around what's available. So it's around what the possibilities are and what the business needs and how that's going to work with the people. And it, and, and it's, it goes back to the triple constraint every time. What does the business need? What technology is available? And what can the people actually use? But my my real pet subject is data. Data is king. I really 100% don't mind what applications my users use as long as they're safe and secure and do the job. If they don't like their, I, I, I don't know, their, their CRM in two years and they want to change it, that's fine. But I keep that base data. That data always stays there. It's always in real time. It's always single source of truth. And it's always accessible by anything else that we want to hook on there, whether that's a customer portal or, or a finance system or anything else. That data needs to be available in an understandable form. And then we can start using that data to start guiding the business 
better than we do today. Today, decisions, yeah? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And data insights. Currently, we're running on KPIs, and they're a month out of date. So you're, you're, you're driving a barge, and you're steering it from the back. And if you change that paddle, the nose goes, and it swings a long way. If we can get the data, deci- the data to give the de- decision makers the data they need to make a decision and guide it from the front, they only need tiny, small tweaks on the business to map out where they want to be, to put the waypoints in the way, and to get to them one after another. That's a very good analogy. I like that. I do too. I've used it twice now. <laughs> um, makes perfect, John. <laughs> it does, yes. But the whole point is to give the business the data they need to make the right decisions. So, how do you manage uh, how much data, John? Because there's, you know, people will people will gather. There's, there's, you know, there's loads of schools of thought on this, isn't there? People will gather data and data and data and never make a bloody decision, frankly. Well, quite frankly, I, we're not there yet because yeah. we don't have the data we need. Yeah. Um, and we don't have access to the data we've got. We will do when we move into dynamics. So that can get more, that can stay traditional. We can start off with the standard KPIs and we can start moving those into real time KPIs rather than being a month out of date. And then we not need to start sparking that imagination in the exec team and in the directors and in the board. So, well, what else is available? What outside of what we usually look at to steer the business would actually help us steer the business? And that can help decide what data we need. And if we've already got that data, ka we can start telling you tomorrow with Power BI, as you've mentioned, Mark, those, that data's there, and this is how it tracks since day we started collecting this data. And then once we're in dynamics, we can start adding additional data sets. We can start sharing data with other HAs or with the police or with weather data. I mean, that, that's a classic one that I mentioned before. If we've got properties on the top of a hill and properties in the valley, do the ones on the top of the hill need their roofs replacing five years before the ones at the bottom of the hill? Yeah. And are the ones at the bottom of the hill, could they last five years longer and save us that cash to build a new home for a, for a family? Well, can I can I just pursue this a little bit, John? Because um, what I think is really interesting here is this point about the uh, using your brain to uh, to try and work out what it is that it, what the question is that you're trying to seek the answer to in the first place. Because uh, j- just to use the analogy, um, I mean, I, I, I've helped a number of organisations out like this, but conceptually, the business case for doing something says we need to get richer data. Great, we want to get better, better MRI and so on. That's what you write in the business case. And everybody goes, yeah, great, fine. We'll buy one of these then. Thanks very much. Um, and then you know, the likes of me comes along and they say, okay, fine. What are you trying to achieve? And well, we're trying to get better MRI and better decision making and blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. What data are you not capturing? Okay. Uh, okay. And, and what are you going to use it for? And yeah. what's the right question? So that's the question to me, you what, what, you know, that, the, the, the bit about... Um, you know, uh, street properties versus you know properties that are that are you know, that are ten yards back because they've got a they've got a um, you know they've, they've got a, a, a drive and the, the windows yeah. and the you know, analogy there about your roofs and, and on the top of hills and on and, you know down in the valley or whatever they they're the questions and what what's what I think is quite interesting to me is who so who how do you get or who and how do you get the business to actually um, think what those questions are you know is is it is it it is it the exec do you create some kind of you know thought unit in you know in 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 the middle is it everybody's responsibility how how do you see that I, i see that playing out by sparking the exec team into seeing new data when we've got it available we don't we don't have the ability yet when we're in dynamics and we've got that richer access to the data I need them to think more of the what if. Yeah. Once we start it at the top, we can spread it downwards. What, 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 what you're describing thing. is, is data science there, Mark. What's the right question to ask? And building that data culture. And if it, if, 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 if it excites the exec because it's going to save them money or it's going to allow them to do additional things on the same budget, which is which is what John's alluding to. Can, I, can this roof last an extra five years in the valley? Is it likely to flood if it's in the valley? All these other things that you need to worry about. But if you're asking the right question, and that's the difficult thing, asking the right question, and that feels very data science. Not everyone's got a data science team or, or a data-driven team, and it's about building that, that culture. And I think, personally, you do that by demonstrating it in small chunks, 
the benefit it can it can bring. That's my take on it. Anyway. And that's that's the way I'm going to be doing it. And we yeah. do have a good reporting team. Yeah. And and the the more they can play with the data and show those spikes and those insights and surface those at the exec level, they may not actually help the business, but they may spark the imagination yeah. enough to say this question would be a good one to ask. Yeah. And we only need a few of those to start the ball rolling. Yeah. And we're back to the, the snowball again. Can I can you can you tell me this? Really? Oh my god, I didn't know we had this much data. I didn't know this was real. I didn't know this was a problem. Um I'm trying so to I, think of an example. I always like the story around this was um the, the, the guys that came up with the Tesco Club Card, and I forget the name of the business, they're a very famous data analytical company now. I think they were a husband and wife pairing. But when they were pitching it to the CEO of Tesco in the in the 90s and, and, and they showed them what they could do after they did the trial, I think the quote from the CEO or chairman of Tesco at the time who was quite a famous person whose name I've forgotten. You know more about my customers than I do. And uh, that is what it gives you. It gives you that insight yes. into, in, 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 into the business and, and what is important for it and where we're, we're you know, it will. It will. It, hopefully, one question will spark another. It's bound to. Right? It's just a natural yep. thing. If you can demonstrate yep. it initially, then then you, you get the ball rolling, and then it will snowball. I, I, That's I, the I, point. I, just getting people into that imaginative mode and thinking about what is possible. And you'd, rather, you'd, you'd rather have that problem, wouldn't you? More, dealing with more questions and less questions. No, no, seriously. Absolutely, one hundred percent agree. You will have a. You will have at some point. You'll, the, the the problem will will uh, shift because. You'll still be doing all the things that you need to be doing, keep the keeping the lights on scenario, if you like, as far as as, as far as the business. And there's only so much time that you've got to um, uh, invest in uh, looking at the new stuff that's that's coming down the line. And that, of course, is the is the traditional trick, yeah. isn't it? Getting that getting that balance right, really. Um, interesting. But also part part of what my role will be over the next few years is enabling the users to do this for themselves. Mm. Yeah. Power BI is is meant to be a user driven software. Yeah, yeah. They may need some training, and they may need to understand how to get the data, but then start playing with it yourselves. Well, see, when you need training, John, come see the wolf. We'll sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yes, always well, it, 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 always it's, it's all about self service, and the QA feature in yes. this is fantastic. It's really, really, really useful tool, Power BI, for that, and allowing your users to ask them questions themselves. John, I'm conscious of time. I want to keep this on track. We've got two more questions to ask you. And just so we can get finished, you can go to your next meeting. Um, uh, Mark, uh, we've, we've got two left. I'll go first. You can ask the last one if you want, or you can ask the next one. I'll, I'll go for this one. Um, the, 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 the penultimate question, John, what advice would you give your younger self or those starting or changing their careers to work in the IT industry? I'm not going to limit it to IT, but definitely career-wise, the one thing that I would advise is follow your passion. Okay. Always always try to do something that you really really enjoy and gets you out of bed every morning and and i know i was exactly the same when i was younger chasing the money but the money comes and if you're following your passion you are going to be flipping good at your role and the money will come with it mm. and i know it's hard when you started off your career but do what you enjoy what you really 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 want to do we've had quite a few um variations on that theme haven't we Gethin, yeah, yeah, in, haven't. Over, over the last it's it's, it's really we're, we're, one of the things we're going to do as an aside is we're going to um go through all the all the uh pods, pods we've done and we're going to pick out uh, things you know things like you know what advice would you give your younger self type type questions i know that there will be massive common ground. Not, not everybody will have said this, you know, but there'll be other people that have said something different, and, and uh, you know, but and, and there'll be other people that have supported that something different. There's yes. a lot about uh, finding. Uh, I remember what the, one of our first guests said. He said um, it's about. Um, he actually said it a different way around, but it, he said it's something along the lines of. Um, it's it's not about um, doing something that you enjoy, but it's about finding enjoyment in what you do. And I know it's not quite what the way that you've said it, John, but it's a similar sort of yep. thing, you know, because you're doing what you're doing for quite a long time, right? You know, oh, yes. forty years. So, um, you know, we're a long time dead and all that. You need to do something that you, that's gonna that's gonna help. Absolutely, I agree. So, tell us a fun fact then, John, about yourself that um, that uh, that you're willing to share that <laughs> nobody else knows about you. Okay, very, very few people know this, but I have a penchant for body art. 
So I have several tattoos. Mm. And I do like my dragons. Well, I guess an eye Welsh. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's not bad. Are they red? <laughs> no. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> I was quite, quite, quite liking you up until that point. <laughs> bon, bon sorry, yeah. Bob. That's not that, 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 that. <laughs> And I think, I think on that note, guys, uh, we will, we will draw this episode uh, to, to, to an end. We won't explore. I won't ask where they are, John. I obviously can't see them because you got your shirt on, <laughs> only got a headshot. Um, but uh, that, that, that's fantastic. Um, so, so John, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you very much for answering our questions. It's been very really well, enjoyable. Um, a re- really enjoyable chat. Thank you, thank you for coming. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Putting the Human Back into Technology with Gethin Ellis, Mark Williams, and our special guest this week, the head of IT for Thrive Homes, John Stenton. <laughs>